Wheat germ is the original health food with claims of its health benefits dating back several decades, but is it still legitimate today? To help you decide, let's look at the proof for wheat germ and see what we can discover. Wheat germ contains a broad spectrum of nutrients, including unsaturated fatty acids, vitamins such as folate, vitamin E, and niacin, and minerals like magnesium and zinc, as well as fiber and proteins. In fact, wheat germ contains all of the essential amino acids that we humans cannot make on our own, and that also includes the branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, as well as choline, lecithin, and even glutathione. See my previous videos on glutathione. Wheat germ also contains wheat germ peptides, small strings of amino acids, which likely also have a variety of biological effects in the body, here is a summary of some of the nutrients in three and a half ounces of wheat germ. And don't be turned off by the calories you see here because most people only use one or two tablespoons of wheat germ, which is a lot less than the three and a half ounces here depicted on the USDA website. Okay, so all this is nice, but the real question is whether wheat germ is a legitimate health food or not. Let's look at the proof. So here's a paper indicating that wheat bread that was enriched with just six grams of wheat germ appeared to favorably improve the gut microbiome diversity after just four weeks. This paper indicates that wheat germ appears to have prebiotic effects. Okay, that's nice. What else might wheat germ do? People who have type 2 diabetes have been reported to have low levels of a substance called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is a substance that plays a role in learning, memory, and even depression. In this investigation, 75 people with type 2 diabetes were told to mix 20 grams of wheat germ or breadcrumbs in 3.5 ounces of yogurt twice a day for 3 months. Compared to those who use breadcrumbs, wheat germ cakers not only appear to have significantly less depression and stress levels, but wheat germ also raised BDNF levels as well. People with type 2 diabetes also tend to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is a precursor to cirrhosis of the liver. In this study, people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease were instructed to use 40 grams of wheat germ each day for three months compared to placebo takers who were using breadcrumbs in this study. Those who used wheat germ saw reduced liver enzymes and lower inflammation levels. Their triglycerides went down, their total cholesterol went down as well, and they also had less fat in their liver. Here's a summary of the average changes seen in this investigation where ALT and GLT are liver enzymes, TC is total cholesterol, TG represents triglycerides, TAC is total antioxidant capacity, CRP is C-reactive protein, a marker of inflammation, and finally CAP is a measure of fat in the liver. All of these improvements were clinically significant and were shown to occur after just three months of daily wheat germ use. In this next paper, 19 men and women, some of whom had elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels, were given 30 grams of raw wheat germ or 30 grams of wheat germ that had some of its fat removed. They call it PDF fat in this paper. After 14 weeks of use, the people using 30 grams of raw wheat germ were rewarded with a 7.5% reduction in their total cholesterol levels, a 15% lower LDL level, 11.5% reduction in their triglycerides, and heart disease risk ratios also declined as well. Interestingly, the wheat germ that was partially defatted didn't fare as well, lowering cholesterol only after the first four weeks of this study, indicating that the fats in wheat germ appear to play a role in some of its health effects. Next up is this paper where 75 people were given 20 grams of wheat germ in low-fat yogurt twice a day 
or a placebo, again, each day for three months. This paper is a bit of a mixed bag because while wheat germ did appear to lower cholesterol levels and raise antioxidant levels, the wheat germ did not appear to improve blood pressure or triglycerides, bad cholesterol levels, or diabetes risk markers like insulin resistance or fasting blood sugar levels. I will point out that this is opposite to what some other investigations have documented. And the researchers here did speculate that the reasons they saw opposite results could have been due to several factors, including wheat germ having a somewhat poor shelf life due to its high unsaturated fat levels and even differences in production processes. Bottom line here, I would like to see this study replicated. Here's a paper where 52 men and women, some of whom were pretty overweight, are given six grams of wheat germ enriched wheat bread for almost four weeks. Oddly, these researchers found that wheat germ did not improve cholesterol or triglyceride levels or lower blood sugar or improve insulin sensitivity. Again, keep in mind, this study only lasted for four weeks, which could indicate that maybe if wheat germ works, it may take longer than one month before you see results. And that brings us to this next interesting study involving people in the intensive care unit of a hospital. 100 people in the ICU who are on ventilators are given a nutrition formula or that same formula that was enriched with wheat germ. Both of these formulas are given via feeding tubes. Again, these are individuals on ventilators. It's also important to note that both groups of people were receiving the same number of calories and the same amount of protein as well. This study is intriguing because those who were getting the wheat germ enriched formula saw improvements in their metabolic rate, their muscle mass appeared to increase, they were in a less comatose state compared to those not getting wheat germ, and equally important, they were able to get off ventilators about six days sooner than those receiving traditional nourishment, and they were discharged from the intensive care unit of the hospital five days sooner. Here's some of the before and after pictures provided in this investigation. As you can see, fat-free mass, which I take to mean muscle mass, increased. Their skeletal muscle mass increased. Their body fat went up and their metabolic rate increased as well. Here's a quick reference breakdown of the results of the study presented here and the amounts of wheat germ that were used to attain those results. Now, I did leave out the study showing that wheat germ didn't work because I wondered if the amount used was too low and maybe it didn't last long enough. And I also left out the hospital study because when we're talking about people on ventilators, that's definitely something that's best done under medical supervision. As you can see here, most of the benefits, whether we're talking about improving liver health or depression, cholesterol, triglyceride levels, appear to show up when people use about 40 grams of wheat germ each day. Also keep in mind that if wheat germ is going to work, it may take about three months to see a difference.